It's, to me, uh, I think a sign of our times that there is so much argument about illness caused by exposure to a tick. Tick-borne disease, especially Lyme disease, now is by all means the fastest growing reported disease in the U.S., even though there's problems with reporting. It's certainly the fastest growing vector-borne disease. Well, why, is, why is Lyme so controversial? Should, shouldn't you just have a rash after a tick bite and you know you're sick and you take antibiotics and you get better? Well, certainly that can occur. About half the people or less, certainly in my experience less, get a typical, uh, we call them an EM rash or erythema uh, migraines rash and sometimes it's a classic bullseye and sometimes it's not. Sometimes you never even have it at all. There are other things that look like EM rashes that aren't. So the rash isn't always there. How about symptoms? 30% of people never remember being bitten by a tick in part because they didn't get symptoms right away. How about exposure? You can go out in the woods and have a tick bite and not get Lyme disease. Uh, you can go out in the woods and, and get tick-borne diseases from other kinds of ticks other than the ones historically like deer ticks that we worry about carrying Lyme disease. How about response to antibiotics? If the illness is identified quickly and treated with three weeks, uh, I like doxycycline, uh, other people like amoxicillin or ceftin or biaxin, very often the illness will be resolved simply with just three weeks. If, however, you are one of the patients with a particular HLA-DR haplotype, and they're 15651, 16551, 4353, or 11352B, I can just about guarantee you that if you take antibiotics alone for three weeks, six weeks, three months, six months, three years, six years, you're unlikely to improve with antibiotics alone. In patients who have this haplotype, which is about 20% of the total population, if they get Lyme disease, they are at high risk to have a biotoxin illness. We can tell by looking at rises of C3A and C4A, remember those are the two complement activation products, that a patient is going to get Lyme disease within 12 hours after a tick bite the paper we recently submitted for publication, and that C4A will stay high until not only is the infection cleared, but also the biotoxin aspect is cleared. Both must occur. We use C3A and C4A to help us to answer the fundamental question of Lyme disease. Well, actually there's two. Do you have Lyme disease? And then number two, have you killed the biologically significant living Lyme organisms? Notice how I said that last little bit. You can have Lyme spirochetes in the body that aren't hurting you. <coughs> how do you know? You look for C4A. And in our practice, visual contrast, MMP9, and C4A <coughs> are the critical tests that we monitor. If we have someone acute Lyme or uh, long duration untreated Lyme or someone who's been treated with antibiotics and still sick, we look at C4A after they've been treated with antibiotics, and I use three weeks as my first starting point, if the C4A falls and they feel fine, good, case is over. If you have three weeks of antibiotics and you've got one of the biotoxin Lyme susceptible haplotypes, C4A will not change with antibiotics alone. Now here, understanding that some physicians at this stage will reach for more antibiotics, what I've done is to go after the biotoxin aspect. That doesn't mean that I'm right and someone else is wrong. I'm just telling you what I do. <coughs> if I then use the actose cholestyramine protocol, and remember your leptin has to be high enough to tolerate actose, uh, and, and see elements on Lyme disease on the website for some more information about that. But specifically, after cholestyramine, if the Lyme organisms are dead, we will see a fall to normal range, or just about normal range, of C4A combined with resolution of symptoms. If you have persistent symptoms and C4A fell, we need to look for possible co-infections here more carefully. What we do, if we've already ruled out co-infections at the get-go, 
is we will measure C4A in a week after we stop cholestyramine. If a person has a confounder, say exposure to mold, which is extremely common in this group of patients, in my experience, by far and away the leading group of confusion about chronic antibiotics or not, if there's a mold exposure, that C4A is going up in a week. If there's living Lyme organisms, the C4A levels will gradually rise, and it takes about a month to reach the level at which they were before starting antibiotics and before starting cholestyramine. They'll all be the same. If you've got C4A elevated on the third test, one month after cessation of cholestyramine, then you probably do need to consider intravenous antibiotics or at least much longer term antibiotics of an oral fashion. That's for you and your doctor to decide. There are excellent uh, discussions of antibiotic treatment uh, from the perspective of chronic Lyme infection. Uh, I would suggest Dr. Boroscano's work uh, be consulted. Uh, Dr. Boroscano has been publishing widely in this field for a long period of time. Um, I'm, I'm less likely to refer you to an infectious disease guy who does not think that you might need long-term antibiotics because if they don't think you need long-term antibiotics, they probably don't know about biotoxins as well. Lyme is what I call the gorilla in the closet. Consider uh, repeat use of antibiotics and quite frankly consideration for longer term antibiotic therapy including intravenous antibiotic therapy. You have to be very compulsive here to make sure that you have thought about and dealt with potential for co-infections. Be sure that you've looked for Bartonella. Bartonella is the new big bad boy on the co-infection block. It's very difficult to diagnose and oftentimes a trial of quinolones and sulfa will be involved. I stay away from rifampin uh, for Bartonella for the simple reason that we need that antibiotic for other things. Think about Babesia, but don't just accept a blood test that said Babesia is there. Look for evidence of what Babesia does. That is to grow inside and destroy red blood cells. That process, which we call hemolysis, gives particular markers in blood as well as hemoglobin in urine. So if you think Babesia of any kind, not just the West Coast kind or the East Coast kind, look for hemolysis before you start taking drugs like Mepron, what have you. If you do have Lyme and Babesia co-infection present, you're not likely to get better just with one course of Mepron. Our paper published in 2005 showed that even three courses of Mepron with cholestyramine uh, are, are, are necessary, and we probably should let that study go for about four. Having said all this, look carefully if before antibiotic therapy at the work of Dr. Boroscano. Dr. Joe Boroscano from uh, Long Island has been publishing extensively uh, about antibiotic therapy for Lyme. He lives in a hotbed. Uh, and having said all that, um, just because you're not from Long Island doesn't mean you don't need Dr. Boroscano's work. But follow C4A, follow visual contrast, and do not accept anything until symptoms are resolved, VCS is correct, and C4A is normal.